In my previous video, dealing with common side spin misconceptions and myths, I clearly showed how for a given object ball contact point, side spin has no effect on cue ball direction for a stun shot. The cue ball heads straight down the tangent line, regardless of whether there is side spin or not. Side spin changes the rebound angle off cushions, but not the direction the cue ball heads off the object ball. This prompted lots of questions and debate on social media, so I thought I would do a follow-up video showing how side spin can be useful to create subtle changes in cue ball motion. First, I'll look at how it works, and then I'll demonstrate some useful examples where this theory can be put to good use in various game situations. Here's an excerpt from a previous myth-busting video series of mine that shows how the cue ball tangent line can be changed with aim and spin. With a stun shot, if you aim at the ideal ghost ball position, the tangent line motion will be accurate, but the object ball will be thrown offline slightly due to cut-induced throw. To be more accurate, you can overcut the object ball slightly, but this will cause a different tangent line direction. Another option is to target the ideal ghost ball position and use gearing outside spin to prevent throw. This will send the object ball in the desired direction and send the cue ball down the expected tangent line. If you hit it well, the object ball stripe will remain vertical during the shot. If you use more outside spin than the gearing amount, you will throw the object ball in the spin-induced throw direction. If the shot calls for this much spin, you can get more accurate object ball motion by aiming the shot a little full. Again, this will result in a different tangent line direction. So with a stun shot, side spin can cause slight changes in the directions the object ball and cue ball head after contact. With a rolling cue ball shot, inside spin can also change the cue ball trajectory. Here's the rolling shot with no side spin. With inside spin, the cue ball path heads even shorter up table. See the links in the video description for explanations why. Now let's look at some useful applications of this theory, starting with using a full hit to hold the cue ball. Here's a good example from volume 2 of the video encyclopedia of 8-ball. Throw can not only be used to change the angle of a shot, it can also be used to help hold the cue ball. Here's a good example shooting stripes, where we need to pocket the 9 and hold the cue ball for a shot at the 14 to continue the run out. With stun and no side spin, because we need to cut the 9 to the left, there will be throw to the right. Therefore, we need to overcut it slightly to compensate for this. Even at less than pocket speed, with as little angle to the pocket as possible, we still can't hold the cue ball for the 14. So it looks like it is impossible to pocket the 9 and still hold the cue ball. The cue ball drifted sideways too far, and we didn't even quite get the 9 to the pocket. However, with about half of maximum right side spin and stun at pocket speed, we can easily hold the cue ball. Spin-induced throw allows us to hit the 9 much thicker than before, since the 9 will be thrown to the left. This results in much less cue ball motion, even at a faster speed than the previous shot. This technique works best when the cue ball is within a few inches of the object ball, and is less effective or not effective at all at larger distances. Here is another example where because of the cut angle on the 11, I can't hold the cue ball for a shot at the 8 with a soft stun shot. But with outside spin and a much fuller hit, I can make the cue ball stop in place, even with the cut angle. I was even able to make the cue ball move to the left slightly while also throwing the 11 to the left. You might not have thought that was possible, but it is with outside spin, a full hit, and maximum spin-induced throw. This gives me the win. This full hit throw technique doesn't work as well when the cue ball is farther from the object ball. This distance is close to the limit. I need to draw back to get shape on the 8, but the 3 is in the way, or at least I thought it was. Well, I got lucky. <laughs> Sometimes, when creating videos like this, even when I'm trying to show something that doesn't work, it works anyway. Oh! That forced me to add the additional one ball blocker. Now it is much more difficult or impossible to get shape on the 8 with straight draw and no pocket cheat. 
that I can get a shot at the 8 with outside spin, a full hit, and pocket cheat. But straight draw with pocket cheat can also get the job done here. With outside spin, the tip can't be as low as with straight bottom spin, so the benefit provided by the outside spin is not as helpful at this distance when draw is required. To get a shot at the 8 here, I need a slow shot with slight draw to get through the gap between the 1 and 5. The problem with this is, slow stun creates the most throw, causing a miss here. One way to deal with this is to overcut the ball to compensate for throw and use a little more draw to still get through the gap. You can clearly see the overcut aim compensating for throw. An alternative approach is to use gearing outside spin. That allows for a natural aim at the ideal ghost ball position, and I don't need to add backspin since the tangent line direction goes through the gap. Did you notice the ideal ghost ball aim? Also notice how the stripe remains vertical, indicating the outside spin was just the right amount to result in no throw or spin transfer. Here's another example where I need to get through the gap between the 3 and 5, with the 5 partially obscuring the stun path. I would like to avoid hitting the 5 and 3 because they can interfere with the cue ball getting shape on the 8. Straight stun does not work. I can try to cheat the pocket to change the tangent line to clear the 5, but throw makes this a dangerous proposition. I could instead try to aim closer to pocket center and draw the cue ball a little to avoid the 5, but it is difficult to not brush the 5 since the backspin does not take right away. I got through the gap, but with a little luck, kissing off both obstacle balls. If there is another obstacle ball preventing me from cheating the pocket, the draw approach becomes more difficult. If I don't get enough draw soon enough, I hit too much of the 5. And if I get too much draw, I hit too much of the 3. An alternative option here is quick draw with an elevated cue, where the cue ball draws sooner to avoid both balls. I got shape on the 8, but barely. I placed the 6 as another obstacle ball to try to prevent the quick draw option, but I got lucky and beat it anyway. Well, I got lucky. <laughs> Again, sometimes it is tough to create a bad shot when doing videos like this. My life is so hard. This ball layout beats the quick draw option. A better approach, with or without the other blockers, is to use outside spin, allowing for a fuller hit to change the tangent line so no draw is required. The cue ball easily gets through the gap with outside stun. In this example, the 5 ball slightly blocks the stun path, and the 2 prevents pocket cheat, so I can't alter the tangent line in a favorable direction. A bump on the 5 could prevent me from getting shape on the 8, but I also don't want to break out the 135 cluster, since that would help my opponent in case I don't succeed in this inning. I can't roll forward because the 6 and 7 block potential follow shot paths. The best option here is to overcut the 11 slightly and use inside spin to throw the ball past the 2. The overcut changes the tangent line to the perfect direction, allowing for a straight stun shot through the gap for the win. In this example, I need to break out the 913 cluster to run the remaining stripes. If I use straight topspin, I go wide of the 13. However, if I add inside spin, I can narrow the carom angle for the breakout. That solved my problem. If you want to know how or why this technique works, see the inside spin link in the video description. One advantage of using gearing outside spin is if the correct amount of spin is used for the given cut angle, the object ball will go in the expected ideal direction with no chance for throw or skid. In other words, a clean hit is guaranteed. I am placing an artificial chalk mark at the 11 ball contact point to demonstrate the effect. 
If you aim at the ideal ghost ball position, skid, also known as cling, kick, or bad contact, will cause a big miss. Did you see how much that ball got thrown due to skid? Using gearing outside spin instead, there is no throw whatsoever, even with the chalk mark at the 11 ball contact point. Some people prefer using gearing outside spin on stun shots like this, since it allows for natural aim at the ideal ghost ball position, and the chances for throw or skid are greatly reduced. Although, it can be difficult for some people to judge the amount of gearing spin for different cut angles, and to aim accurately over a wide range of shot distances and speeds when using side spin. See the gearing outside spin resource page linked in the video description if you want to learn more about this technique and its value. When the cue ball hits an object ball at an angle with no side spin, the cue ball picks up some side spin from the collision. This is called cut induced spin. Here's an example. With a center ball hit, the cue ball picks up right spin off the object ball. Did you see the cue ball rebound to my right off the end cushion? One way to counter this effect, in this case to have the cue ball head straight up table for a shot at the 8 in the side next, is to use a touch of inside spin to cancel the cut induced outside spin. The cue ball had no side spin after the collision, resulting in no rebound angle change off the cushion. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this side spin myth follow up video. Give all the shots a try. If you want to learn about many more common pool myths and misconceptions, see the top 100 pool myths page linked in the video description. The page debunks them all, backed up by supporting resources and clear demonstrations. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.